Hello everyone, this is Skarzig, and welcome back to the next episode of Vitruvian vs. Uh, I did a lot of testing and swapped out a lot of things with the deck, and I've come up with something that I don't want to say is too consistent, but I feel has a decent matchup against pretty much everything besides Banar, because Chromatic Cold is uh, really ridiculous versus Vitruvi, and they, uh, they were one of the factions that were able to hang with uh, Old Third Wish Vitruvian as well last month, so now we're, we're paying for it. The Vitruvian faction is definitely paying for it, but uh, again, I found something that I think that works. Let me go over it real quick for you. Uh, we've got three Siphon Energy, three Sounds First Wish, two Cosmic Flesh, three Dune Casters, three Healing Mystic, three Primus Fist, three Raja's Curse, three Staff of Akir, a Lady Lock, three Orb Weaver, three Sand Howler, two Scion's Third Wish, three Ember Rejuvenator, two Stars Fury, and two Amera Healer. Now, uh, this, this deck aims to uh, keep control of the board. I'm going to be trading heavily with my General and Staff of Akir um, and attempt to set up um, preferably a Sand Howler with Third Wish. Uh, this I don't really need the Siphon Energy early versus Abyssian. This will come in handy later uh, in the mid-game versus Vorpal Reavers or uh, Shadow Dancers and things like that. And going Primus Fist in the Staff of Akir is a decent turn 2 play for this deck, but because it's versus Abyssian, I'm not going to need Staff of Akir really to trade into anything. Um, again, with this deck, when you uh, when you get the Sand Howler with the Third Wish on it, it's extremely hard for your opponent to deal with it. This is um, basically me rushing into the center, trying to wall out my opponent with uh, minions and my general with Staff of Bakir, and defend the uh, dervishes behind me. We got some uh, mid-game combos with uh, Lady Locke as well. She combos really, really well with... Um, What's it called? Orb Weaver. Okay, so this is a pretty decent start. The uh, Dream Gazer got a pretty bad spawn, so... I'm gonna go uh, Healing Mystic into Primus Fist. That way I can heal myself. And then the Primus Fist will buff the Healing Mystic. Um... With this deck, um, it has a lot of 3-drops, so the Scion's First Wish come in especially handy to even out your mana on uh, odd turns, and it lets you draw a card and really keeps the deck going, because it's sort of swarmy. Uh, so he's playing uh, defensively. He's probably going to try to drop a Shadow Dancer or something back in this corner and get his engine started up. So, um, hmm, I can get up to 5. Star's Fury would clear the board. That would probably be worth it now while I have the chance. Because I can take out these two, and then the leftover Dervishes can take out the uh, Emma Rejuvenator. And uh, one of the weaknesses of this deck is um, you will get swarmed if you don't keep on top of your opponent. We need to make these uh, early pressure plays in order to stay relevant. And I'm going to go ahead and keep the Scion's First Wish because they replace themselves and it's only one mana. Now that um, all the mana tiles are taken, because I'm player two, I have a natural mana advantage and I'm able to press that a bit more. Now the Night Sorrow here um, what I'm going to do is actually hit it with my general. I'm not going to trade the uh, Primus Fist into it. We'll get rid of the third wish for now. Lady Locke is pretty good here. Just pressuring my opponent onto his side. We're going to fish a little bit before we hit with the Primus Fist. And what Rejuvenator is good. Hmm, I could play that now. I'd only get two health out of it. But I think for tempo, we're going to drop that down right now. And this is the turn where we want to start holding on to Siphon Energy. Um, he can summon something and Dark Sacrifice it so that he gets 
um, a mana cost reduction off of a larger creature like a Spectral Revenant or something like that. Because uh, Dream Gazer into Darkfire Sacrifice um, is zero mana overall when you use Dream, Dream Gazer's special effect. And so he'd be able to pull out uh, something here. Ooh, so that, see that right there is a very weak play. Playing this naked on the board in range of the Emerald Rejuvenator. That tells me that he's getting desperate if he didn't really have anything else to play. Um, now, since I do have the uh, Sand Howler and the Third Wish in my hand, I think that it would be proper to, to hold those. So we're actually going to get rid of the Lady Lock because I do want to hold the Siphon Energy to be safe. And I get to do this now. We can put the Scion's first wish on the Emerald Rejuvenator so that it lives against the Shadow Dancer. Ooh, and then Staff of Akir lets me even out my five mana. That's a beautiful play. Okay, so now my opponent's in a bit of a pickle because he can take out the uh, Emerald Rejuvenator. He already showed off that he has Blood Tear Alchemist. Okay, Demonic Lore works as well. And he can Night Sorrow this uh, Sand Howler. But if he decides to stick around... Ah, nope. He's gonna run away. And so now this is where things get interesting. Now that I have this Sand Howler with Third Wish on it, it buffs it out of Night Sorrow Assassin range. And now he's not gonna be able to deal with it. I'm going to trade the uh, Emerald Rejuvenator with my General and the Staff of the Kier. And we're going to shoot him. And then I've got another Emerald Rejuvenator to follow up with. This is, uh, this is what it looks like when the deck goes well. I was able to push my early advantage onto the Abyssian General because they're really strong if they can get going, but this deck is really strong if it gets going. So uh, right now I'm just slowly whittling them down, and I've managed to draw some pretty clutch heals as well. Ooh, Spectral Revenant, this is perfect for him. He gets to take out that high priority target and deal 4 damage to me. Luckily, my artifact was already broken. Um, let me see, 4, 5, 6, 7, almost lethal. Um, we'll discard the Orb Weaver, see what we can get. Okay. So now, um, I think that this is game. He can demonic lore the Amara healer away, but if he summons another Spectral Revenant, for example, and kills the Amara healer, its effect will finish him off. Yep, see, there it is. So he's going for the, uh, the style Sudoku. Well played, sir. Alright, making this deck look good. We're still low rank, though, so I'm not gonna talk... I'm not gonna talk any... Cast any shade on my opponents there. Because we're still trying to get to gold. The, uh... <laughs> the first week of the, uh, the season has been, for me, heavy, heavy testing. And fortunately, because Abyssian has such a rough time dealing with Third Wish targets, it makes for a very solid matchup uh, because they're so popular. Uh, so Vitruvian has a chance to climb the ladder just because I think that they have a pretty good standing against the natural order of the ladder, so to speak. Which is why, again, Vanar did so well last season, because it was it had a really solid matchup against Vitruvian, who was considered the strongest faction. Okay, so... Based on this hand, I think I'm actually going to go Primus Fist into Staff of Akir because I see that he has a healing mystic. And if he uses the healing mystic to take this mana, then I can kill it next turn. Or he can use the healing mystic and his general to take out the Primus Fist. 
which I think might be a bit stronger because then the uh, this is left as a 2-1 and it still gets to take a charge off of my artifact. And now it looks like he's going to go for the ramp play, getting these uh, two mana tiles here. Okay. And then to, into Night Sorrow, it looks like. Very strong play by him. Okay, so... Um, we're gonna swap out one Orb Weaver, see what we can get. Cosmic Flesh is very good. Unfortunately, I can't get up to 5 mana this turn because uh, Orb Weaver into Cosmic Flesh is pretty solid. Sand Howler into Cosmic Flesh is also pretty solid because your opponent has to run all of their minions into it since it's immune to spell. So it's a great way to maintain control and clean up the board. Unfortunately, none of those options are available to me. So what I will be doing is this play. Take out the Healing Mystic like I said I would, and we're summoning the Orb Weavers defensively. Uh, those combo really well with Lady Locke. Summoning them naked like this is... Uh, one of the weaker plays for this deck because I didn't have enough mana to follow it up with a buff for those guys. But with this setup, my general is going to be tanking in order to keep these alive. If I can replace next turn into a third wish, then I can uh, start it rolling and make a comeback. Passing it on an orb weaver is not as strong because uh, spells can still affect it. But you take what you can get with this deck. So Alswin Lord Master, as you saw, is going to bring back the Void Pulse, um, and that pings my artifact. So I wonder if he's going to uh, hit me for three here. Okay, yeah. Hit me for three. So now that I'm up to five, I think Sand Howler Cosmic Flesh is actually correct here. Let's uh, swap out the Orb Weaver, see what we can get. Staff of Akir. Um... What if I went Sand Howler in a defensive spot, then equipped another Staff of Akir to take out the Healing Mystic? That's a really risky play. That puts me low. Um, summoning the Sand Howler with Cosmic Flesh would make it into a 4-6 unit. So it would survive both. I think that that is the play, and it would be buffed out of Night Sorrow range. Okay. Yeah, I think that this is the uh, proper play. Keeps my uh, keeps my HP up. Spectral Blade would be really good here for him. Because that way he can uh, use the Healing Mystic first, and then Spectral Blade will get the kill. And so he'll get healing from the Spectral Blade, and he'll only take two damage effectively from this combo here. Um, I do have Rasha's Curse to follow up and counter that. And the Orb Weaver is here standing by. If I can replace it to Third Wish next turn, then I'll be able to get some pretty good damage off. Void Pulse, so another reason why equipping the artifact wouldn't be uh, a good for, good turn for me there. Double Void Pulse, yeah, so that would have broken my other artifact, so saving it here is probably best. So he's back up to full. Okay, so... Do I need the Staff of Akir here? Since I'm low HP, I do not need the Staff of Akir. No Third Wish, unfortunately. Um, we're going to leave the Orb Weaver in a somewhat safe position there. Um, hmm. 
Hmm. I can uh, move into a defensive position as well. Let's draw some cards. See what we can get. Emerald Rejuvenator. That's really, really good. We're going to put it... Uh, yeah, the Primus Fist can't do anything. I think putting it here is best. And... We're going to buff this guy. We're going to get that damage in. Because um, he was a, became a 6-6, six, six, all three of these would trade into it regardless. Two of these uh, creatures, I mean, and then his general would finish it off. So this way, since I basically am saying it's going to die anyway, I'm getting its damage into the face while I can. Oh, that's cute. But Tyranny Healing Mystic, very good. He's closing in on this Orb Weaver because he knows that the third wish is coming. Night Sorrow. Okay, that's fair. This positioning is actually really solid too because um, it plays around Star's Fury up against the wall here. I think it's best to go for it anyway because I'd get three... Yeah, I, I would get three uh, Dervishes to clear. Well, hit one, hit two, and then the other dervish and I could kill this. Yeah, so I think that that's the play. Just again to keep from getting overrun. We don't want um we don't want our opponent to cash in for any uh, death watch, soul grimoire, and all that. Deathfire crescendo, etc. We hit, and we hit. Okay, our opponent's board is clear. We're going to summon here to keep him corralled. Hmm. Now, up for debate is, as a stronger play would actually be to heal the Emerald Rejuvenator. But I think that the pressure here overall is pretty good because if he wants to hit it with his general then um, he'll just take another four damage and that's fine by me because I have another emerald Reju rejuvenator in hand um, another sand howler standing by so I think that my third wish should be coming here pretty soon so hopefully I can get it set up because as you saw I had um, Dervishes, I had those Orb Weavers set up for quite a few turns uh, before you could take them out. It's just the third wish didn't come. Got Siphon Energy for Jaxie. I've been holding on to this for a few turns, too. I've been really, really tempted to discard that. Okay. So, need to kill this. I can do Rosh's Curse, and then trade the Healing Mystic into it. Siphon Energy on the Jaxi. So if I went 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I don't need the Sand Howler. So I could theoretically get another option here, but I want to keep it because of the Third Wish threat. So we're going to go... We're going to go that route overall. And then we've got Emerald Rejuvenator into Primus Fist, Siphon Energy, and then kill the Jax. So we did manage to use our mana pretty efficiently. Um, again, no third wish. I do have a Sand Howler Dunecaster, which is also a pretty good combo. Especially at this point in the game. My opponent's at 8 mana. I'm expecting maybe a Spectral Revenant 
he can uh, trade into the Emerald Rejuvenator, and then it will deal four to me, and then it lives with one HP. Yep, there it is. Which is really clutch, because now I'll have to trade the Primus Fist into it, and then it'll die and deal another four HP to me. So, that is going to be the play. So we break even because of the Emerald Rejuvenator heal. Um, we're gonna go Sand Howler and Dunecaster. All right, talk deck for life, boys. Now I put the Dunecaster here because it's important that if he wants to kill it, he'll be able to run this way and not down this way. Or maybe I think I got that reversed. I'd want him to run this way, because that's more in the corner. Ah, uh, Shadow Dancer. If he, if he melee attacks the Dunecaster, then he'll heal one. Oh, never mind. So he's just retreating now. Barricading himself. Blood Tier Alchemist. Okay, he heals one. I take one. Demonic Lore. Not bad. Now he's at 10. 5, 6, 7. If I replace this Orb Weaver in the third wish, then I'd be able to lethal him. But if I don't if I don't replace the uh, Orb Weaver, then I can go uh, Sand Howler into the Shadow Dancer, and then that leaves him with options. And then I can maybe go... I think it's worth it to try to set up the lethal here, because I can take out the Shadow Dancer either way, and that's the most important part. Dunecaster. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. One off. Terrible shame. Should I still go for it, though? I can melee attack him and then have the Rasha Dunecaster combo take out the Shadow Dancer, which I believe is correct. Back off. Let's see. Blood Tear moves here. I would still die to Saber Spine Tiger Shadow Reflection. It might have been best to summon the Dunecaster here. But actually, seeing that he can move this way. Whew, this is pretty intense. Is he going to be able to kill the Sand Howler? Dancing Blades. Okay. So, don't need Staff of Akir. First Wish is good. Let's go digging. Siphon Energy is not going to help here. So, right now, we're just working on Formation. Moving the Emerald Rejuvenator up, it trades into this one for free. So I think I want to put it here as a threat, and then we'll put the Primus Fist here to keep it out of the range of this guy. You can highlight an enemy, shows their uh, their range by the way. I don't know if I've ever gone over that. Siphon Energy is not going to do anything for us here. We might be able to use it to disenchant a Spectral Revenant so that it doesn't hurt so much to take it out. But we do have the positional advantage technically for this matchup because of the uh, third wish. If I can get that set up. Housewind Loremaster brings back Scion's first wish. Okay, so he's digging too. That makes that a 5-5. Five, five. And I can disenchant it 
Dispel it, I mean. Demonic Lord? He's used all three, hasn't he? I guess not. He's thinking about it. Whether or not he wants to trade the Dancing Blades into it. Looking at my hand now, I really want to trade that Siphon Energy out for, a di for an additional option, but if he drops something really big, then, well, at this point, if he drops something big, then the Siphon Energy is not going to help me anyway. So I think it's best to try to trade it out for an additional option. Healing Mystic. Doomcaster dies for free. Damn, I, th I think I I think I misplayed those healing mystics. Let me see. Could have played here, 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 here. No, I think the do he gets the Doomcaster for free. The uh, Emerald Rejuvenator comes down to take out this Healing Mystic, and then the Primus Fist comes around to take out the Doomcaster. Um, I do have a Mera Healer. I think he's used all three Demonic Lures now, so I think that dropping it here would be pretty nice. And I'll be replacing Staff of Akir most likely. We'll see how it develops, because I might have to fight my way out of this corner. Bloodman Priestess. Okay, yeah, so Staff of Akira is no good because of the, um... Because of the Rage Blitz. God, I'm forgetting the name of a bunch of stuff today. Damn. Okay. What do we get? Third, <laughs> there's there's my third wish. A little bit too late, my friend. So let's see. If I summon the Amara Healer, he trades the Emerald Rejuvenator into it. I go up to 17 health. And then, Wraithlings upon Wraithlings upon Wraithlings. So let's, let's do that. Oh. Bad spawn. Sadness. I was hoping it would spawn here or here so that I could summon the Amara Healer there. But that's GG. <sighs> so yeah, that's one of the problems with this deck. It runs out of steam uh, if you don't get your third wish combo. Um, running three of them in this deck probably would be best, but it's really dangerous because if you when you draw it, when you don't have a Dervish, it's a bad draw. And when you do have setups, drawing it uh, never. This is this is uh, probably one of the numerous games where the uh, deck hasn't come through for me in terms of the Scion's third wish. But uh, you can see both sides of the matchup there. One where I I beat Abyssian, and you can see how they can also beat me back. So I think that the deck overall is uh, at a fair strength. I'd say the way Magmar was last season, where. Um, they had a pretty good matchup against everybody, and it was very viable, so... Vitruvian isn't completely dead, and I am looking forward to playing a lot more of them uh, to finish out this season. So, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you next time. You have a good one.